right, so we're going to move ahead. Uh, our next speaker is Ashley Salazar, who's uh, a registered uh, dietitian at uh, St. John's Providence. And so she's going to talk a little bit about diet and how do we deal with that in our cancer diagnosis and going forward. So thank you for being here, Ashley. Thank you for having me and thank you for those who have um, attended both in person and virtually. So today we'll talk about nutrition and melanoma and basically what the current research uh, says with the link between the two. Again, my name is Ashley. I work at uh, Providence uh, St. John's as an inpatient and outpatient dietitian. So just to start out with some statistics, uh, melanoma is the most common of all cancer types. Um, however, it is the rarest type of skin cancer, only accounting for 1% of um, skin cancers. Even so, it's the most fatal and uh, dangerous because it causes the, the majority of skin cancer deaths. One of the most prominent risk factors for melanoma is uh, sun exposure and UV ray exposure. Um, and so it would go to say that sun wearing sunscreen and wearing protective clothing is the first resort for preventing your risk for melanoma. Um, but research has shown that diet shows promising, um, promising uh, plays a role in, in also preventing melanoma. So just as a rule of thumb, maintaining a healthy weight at any age is one of the most important um, uh, things for general cancer prevention. Um, a study actually showed that obese men and um, obese and overweight men actually carry a 31% uh, increased risk for developing melanoma. Um, interestingly, a study by Theodorus and colleagues predicted a linear increase in BMI and melanoma, which is shown in the blue dash line, um, meaning that they predicted that if one's BMI increased, then your risk for melanoma would also increase. Um, however, it wasn't the case as shown in the, the red dash line. Uh, there, there's a data set actually showed that both overweight and obese um, men actually carried a relative, similar relative risk factor for developing melanoma. So whether your BMI was 25 to 30 or 30 and above, your risk for melanoma was um, essentially the same. Interestingly, also, they uh, found no association between overweight and obese women and melanoma, but there might be a confounding factor in the sense that um, both overweight and obese men, uh, women also have less sun exposure, um, because another data set showed that uh, the, the, the overweight and obese women who were actually um, uh, adjusted for sun exposure did show a positive and, um, and uh, significant, statistically significant increase for melanoma risk. So it would go to say that maintaining a healthy weight is one of the most first resorts for, for preventing melanoma. In terms of diets, a uh, plant-based diet has been shown uh, to decrease your risk for developing a lot of cancers, including uh, prostate, lung, mouth, throat, stomach, and colon. For other types of cancers, including melanoma, uh, research is either inconsistent or limited. Um, but it is a well-known fact that majority of Americans do not consume enough fruits and vegetables. Um, actually, a study by the American Cancer Society stated that only 14.8 and 19.1 um, percent of females, males and females, um, uh, only consumed the recommended amount of 2.5 cups of fruits and vegetables daily. Apart from antioxidants, plant-based diets also provide adequate fiber, right? And so another study um, found that individuals who were um, go undergoing immunotherapy and diagnosed with melanoma, they found that those consuming a high fiber diet actually had um, more survival um, survival rates, higher survival rates versus the individuals with melanoma undergoing immunotherapy with low fiber diets. 
So you may be asking yourself, what is so special about antioxidants, right? Um, in order to understand why they're special, we have to understand what they do in the body. And so I like to call antioxidants basically the peacemakers of the body. So uh, free radicals and reactive oxygen species come in through either environmental factors or intracellular factors. And antioxidants basically, um, uh, basically uh, stabilize them, right? To prevent them from DNA damage that can cause other diseases. Today, we'll discuss a few antioxidants, including vitamin D, vitamin A, selenium, isothiocyanates, green tea, polyphenols, curcumin found in turmeric, and uh, polyunsaturated fats, and their association with melanoma. So vitamin D is the best researched. Um, there has been shown that low vitamin D serum levels uh, increases one's risk for uh, developing melanoma and also has shown that it leads to worse survivorship outcomes. Interestingly, another study found that uh, vitamin D, adequate vitamin D levels um, also improves the efficacy of treatment for melanoma, including uh, radiation and chemotherapy. So vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. Um, its active form is produced in the liver and kidney. And uh, we can either get vitamin D from food sources or from sunlight. Vitamin D source, food sources include things like fatty fish, like uh, mackerel, herring, salmon, egg yolks, liver, and fortified products such as vitamin D fortified milk, dairy, right? Um, cereals or orange juice. However, diet alone can usually only provide 10 to 20% of your adequate vitamin D that's recommended daily. So most of it comes from um, sun, sun absorption, 80 to 90% of it comes from sun absorption. Its main function is to regulate calcium and uh, phosphate homeostasis, but studies have actually shown that um, we also, cells also have vitamin D receptors or VDRs uh, that play a role in inducing cell cycle arrest, stimulating program uh, cell death like apoptosis and inhibiting angiogenesis and metastasis. So research is complex with vitamin D um, and inconclusive because of the fact that your main source of vitamin D um, is also uh, the main risk factor for developing skin cancer, right? Um, and so if an individual is unable to get adequate vitamin D through diet alone, I do generally we do recommend vitamin D supplementation, especially if you are deficient um, and wearing always wearing protective um, skin measures, whether it's sunscreen or protective clothing when you are exposed to sun. So the next one is vitamin A. Vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin and it can be consumed in two forms. So there is retinol found in mostly animal products like uh, beef, liver, eggs, um, and certain uh, dairy products. And then there are carotenoids, right? Which are uh, found in alpha and beta carotene. You can think of your orange fruits and vegetables apart from other ones. So sweet potatoes, carrots, um, pumpkin, and then also spinach, broccoli, honeydew, melon, etc. So it plays vitamin A plays a well-known role in immune and vision regulation, but studies have also shown that it may also decrease the amounts of UV um, light that reaches underlying skin levels by increasing epidermal thickness. So it shows a protective measure against skin cancer. A study actually showed a 20% reduced risk for developing melanoma with supplementation of uh, retinol. Um, it found a null effect for vitamin A and, um, and beta carotene, but interestingly, beta carotene only has 1 12th percent of vitamin A activity of um, retinol. So it could just be that the study did not supplement enough beta carotene to show um, a protective measure against melanoma. The 
The next one is selenium. Selenium is a trace element, and so we need it in smaller amounts. Um, but sources include seafood, meat, poultry, eggs, dairy, beans, Brazil nuts. Interestingly, Brazil nuts, two to three Brazil nuts a day has 100% of all your selenium needs, right? So that's an easy fix. Um, so selenium, the reason it's so special is because it acts as a cofactor for certain antioxidant enzymes in your body. So these two are glutathione peroxidase and thioredux dioreduxin reduxase. Uh, they basically uh, change toxic products like hydrogen peroxide and lipid peroxide, peroxide, uh, peroxides sorry, in your body um, to harmful water, okay? So studies are limited regarding selenium supplementation and melanoma specifically, but for cancer mortality, a study by um, Raymond and uh, colleagues found that they basically supplemented individuals with melanoma, um, sorry, with cancer, um, with 300, 200, and 100 micrograms of selenium per day. The, the individuals who were supplemented with 300 um, actually showed an increased risk for all-cause mortality and cancer mortality. And then those with 100 and 200 actually showed decreased risk for uh, all-cause and cancer mortality. So there is a limit to supplementation as well. Um, we never want to go overboard, right? Another study actually found that it also decreased your risk for developing melanoma specifically, but it didn't decrease tumor growth. The next one is isothiocyanates or IT, ITCs. These are found in cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts. Um, and these are, there's different types, but uh, sulforaphane is the most studied. And they are conjugated into glutathione, which we just uh, discussed with selenium. It shows antioxidant enzyme um, properties. Um, they also, They also um, induce other uh, antioxidant enzyme pathways via the activation of NRF2, which is shown um, on the screen. They basically stop uh, cell growth and actually um, decrease your pro-inflammatory cytokines. The next one is polyphenols and phenols. So there is a variety. These are naturally occurring compounds found in fruits, vegetables, cacao, red wine, um, and uh, tea. Today we'll discuss uh, three of them, ECGC, flavonoids, and curcumin, although there is a plethora of them. So ECGC basically acts as a photoprotection of the skin by upregulating DNA repair and inhibiting, inhibiting uh, UVD-induced damage. Okay. Flavonoids, they have been suggested to scavenge free radicals from the body um, and inhibit malignant cell proliferation. Curcumin, which is a polyphenol found in the turmeric plant, has been shown to inhibit growth invasion and uh, progression of human melanoma cells through multiple pathways. Um, the pathways are complex. But apart from that, it also serves as a anti-inflammatory right agent in a lot of um, in a lot of functions. Lastly, polyunsaturated fats. So there is uh, two unsaturated fats. There's omega sixes and omega threes, and it's actually been shown that intake of omega threes, um, or actually your ratio, a higher ratio of omega threes to omega sixes can actually um, have a protective effect on overall cancer, um, overall cancer risk by in reducing inflammatory pathways. Omega-3s essentially reduce, uh, go through inflammatory, uh, anti-inflammatory pathways. Uh, so two stars of the show, just based on what we discussed, a few antioxidants is the Mediterranean diet. It's characterized by high consumption of plant foods, such as vegetables, beans, fruits, whole grains, and olive oil with moderate to low amounts of uh, red meat and um, dairy products, added sugar and alcohol. 
Uh, also, the DASH diet is characterized by high amounts also of whole grains, fruits, vegetables, um, and moderate to low intake of red meat and sodium. And so um, these two are well-known, um, studied both in cancer prevention um, and general healthy diet. And so these have most of your antioxidants, right? Most of your fiber, most of your whole grains that you need. Just as a rule of thumb to, um, to kind of bring it all in together, um, some cancer risk reduction tips. There's no um, certain diet that we recommend for cancer reduction, uh, but these uh, three tips can help um, just also are a part of a general healthy diet, but also can reduce your risk for general cancer prevention. So eating two to three cups of fruits and vegetables daily, you want to eat the rainbow, right? We always hear that. So green leafy vegetables, they have your isothiocyanates, which we just discussed, your uh, carotenoids, which are your um, orange um, fruits and vegetables, your flavonoids, those are the darker red, purple, blue um, types of um, food products, and then your dried or fresh herbs and spices, right? We discussed turmeric, but there's also ginger, uh, garlic, um, and then other herbs. Um, we also want to aim for a low fat diet. So limiting our intake of saturated and trans fats, which include butter, margarines, shortenings, processed meats, and include uh, healthy fats, right? So flax seeds, avocado, olive oils, um, soybeans, nuts. So this is where your PUFAs, right? Your polyunsaturated fats come in. Um, and then as a general rule of thumb, limiting alcohol consumption or sugary drinks. So the CDC recommends um, only two drinks per day for men and one drink um, per woman. Um, a drink could either be five uh, ounces of wine, 12 ounces of beer, or one uh, to 1.5 ounces of a hard liquor. If you don't drink at all, it's not recommended to start. Um, and so you can, you can generally just not drink alcohol at all. Um, <laughs> another thing is choosing those uh, polyphenols, right? So green tea, um, coffee, um, black tea, right? They contain a lot more uh, antioxidants as well. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much, Ashley. I'm, I'm certain that will um, raise lots of questions about what we eat and how it affects our health and treatment.